Hey everyone, so it's a, a cold, windy uh, Montana day just after a uh, pretty decent snowstorm last night. And uh, today's video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, my kind of career path as wildlife biologist and uh, why I've decided in my career that academia uh, as a career path really isn't for me and what the alternatives are and explore some of the other options and see what's out there and help you kind of understand why that is. So let's go ahead and get started. So I guess the, the first question to answer here is what do I mean by the academic career path? And, you know, simply enough, by the academic career path, I'm really referring to uh, any wildlife work that's sort of within this, like, tiered university system, where you uh, go from graduate school to a postdoc, to, you know, assistant professor, to a, you know, full-time tenure professor, and where the, your primary goals are, uh, you know, lab research or field research and uh, putting out publications for that research. And, the non-academic side then is basically going to be everything else, right? All the other uh, kinds of jobs you can get as a wildlife biologist. So what led me to uh, kind of make this decision and how did I kind of come to the conclusion that the academic life was just really not for me and just didn't fit within my kind of goals and uh, what I want to accomplish as a wildlife biologist and conservationist? And you'll put very simply, I think that the, the main driver behind this is a matter of what the goals are and what the measure of success is uh, within a given field. Academia is kind of its own beast. You know, the, there's this entire stereotype of the ivory tower. And I think to a certain extent, there's a reason for that stereotype where it really does, in my experience, form its own separate universe. You're almost like caught in this loop where what you do is often done for academia's own sake. The measure of success, more often than not, in academia uh, for professorships is to publish publications. The research itself is the focus, rather than the impacts of the research and what you do with the research and how the research affects the world around you. And I think that's really the, the central problem I have with academia, is that, to me, my interest foremost is in conserving wildlife species. My internal measure of success is whether or not we've helped prevent extinction that may otherwise have occurred. And that particular measure of success is just not applicable to an academic setting. In academia, you succeed if you publish publications. And if you don't publish publications, then you're deemed as a failure. Your goal is to get grant money for the department, for the institution, and they don't particularly care what the overall impact of your research are in terms of species conservation. You know, they, they pay lip service to those kinds of things, but it's made very, very clear that this publish or perish methodology, as we call it, is something that needs to take priority over all of the things. And uh, it, it's that reason in particular that I really found myself uh, drifting away from the academic career path. And I think it was getting my master's uh, this last fall that just kind of really, really sealed that deal. And it became very, very obvious to me that this separate universe of academia is really just not one that uh, can, I can really apply myself uh, towards in the same way that I would uh, for kind of conservation NGOs and other things like that. Um, but rather than just kind of depressing you all with uh, the kind of forlorn aspects of uh, why I find academia a frustrating uh, endeavor and just really not for me in this avenue, um, I really want to talk a little bit about what other jobs are available and what a non-academic career path can look like and what I hope to accomplish with my own. So if you're interested in wildlife biology as a career path, what other options exist out there? And there are a few that I'm going to talk about here, and the first of them, and uh, there's a, another channel uh, by a uh, YouTuber called Christina Lin that I'll kind of link over here, that uh, I think goes into a lot of interesting details along these lines oftentimes I would highly recommend checking out. Uh, one of the options is uh, doing environmental consulting work, and this is something that uh, I pursued for the last three summers and soon to be a fourth. And the general idea is that 
There are often times where government agencies or corporations or other entities like that uh, need to evaluate uh, how proposed actions that can have environmental impacts uh, will affect the environment and ecosystems uh, around them. And to do that, they don't necessarily have the resources themselves to go about kind of formally identifying those impacts. And so they'll often uh, reach out to outside companies to help them in that evaluation process. Um, and so for the, the last three summers, I've been working on a uh, project with Turnstone Environmental Consultants, which are a uh, consulting group based in uh, Oregon, but they do work you know, kind of throughout the Pacific Northwest. And I've been doing surveys for this uh, strange, odd, endangered seabird called the marbled murrelet. And so the marbled murrelet is this kind of weird species of seabird that will fly in in the mornings uh, with fish to bring to its young in the nest. And because it's very often reliant on old growth trees, we need to determine whether or not logging of certain areas uh, will impact mirrorlet populations and whether they're currently nesting there or they're flying through and you just what the uh, general distribution of the marble mirrorlet is and whether or not the logging proposed will impact the marble mirrorlet habitat. So because of that, Turnstone is often hired uh, by the government to uh, perform formal surveys for this endangered seabird. And they basically have their employees go out there uh, before dawn, hiking in the middle of the night with their headlamps to certain pre-specified spots, and go around kind of looking uh, in the sky, uh, listening for the calls of the seabird, and try to determine whether or not there's actually presence of those animals there. And so consulting work, I think, is a really interesting uh, option because it allows you to do work that in various ways has uh, these kinds of on the ground impacts and your measure of success is whether or not you properly accomplish the surveys that were asked of you and not the publications that may come out of the research uh, that it involves. And so uh, that's the first of those options is environmental consulting. Um, like I said, go ahead and uh, check out uh, Christina Lynn's channel if you're kind of interested in more because she really does have some really awesome content uh, along those lines. So let's go uh, check out uh, non-academia option number two. Okay, so a uh, second option and one that is something that I'm really interested in pursuing uh, kind of on a longer term time scale is to work for uh, non-governmental organizations, so NGOs. Um, and these are uh, kind of groups who have a whole you know, wide assortment of kind of different goals and purposes and uh, what they do for their work. But uh, some of the more famous organizations are things like the uh, World Wildlife Fund, the Wildlife Conservation Society. Uh, you ha can have more specialty groups like Ducks Unlimited. Um, and so they, these are organizations that span just a wide range of uh, interests and eventual outcomes. So what exactly do NGOs do? And because uh, every NGO is different, and their overall goals are different. I'll kind of give you an idea uh, with one of my personal favorite NGOs is somebody interested in uh, wild cat conservation uh, of Panthera. So Panthera is an organization uh, that was that is uh, based out of New York that does international wildlife conservation all across the globe. They were uh, in part formed by a uh, multi-billionaire who decided that he wanted to uh, use a lot of that money uh, in the efforts of wild cat conservation conservation and hire uh, scientists and managers and people who uh, have this kind of understanding and passion for wildcat conservation you know, to accomplish the overall goal of conserving cat species in the wild. And as a consequence, they have projects just all over the world. They're working with uh, lions and tigers and uh, kind of you know, smaller cat species, mountain lions in the States and uh, you know, you know, all sorts of projects all around the world, snow leopards and the Himalaya and all sorts of things like that. And uh, they hire uh, various biologists with the uh, overall goal of enabling conservation of those species. And 
you know, those biologists uh, may in fact do uh, academic style publications. But what I love about the kind of NGO existence is that the the goal of the publications is not for the publication's own sake, but for the impact that that publication can have. So y they might be hired out by the uh, government of some foreign country to, uh, you know, examine the habitat in the area and train local biologists and work with local communities to help um, avoid, oh God, it's okay, to help avoid kind of carnivore livestock conflicts and all sorts of things that can be done to benefit the existence of cats across the globe. So a couple of things here. One, I really don't want to give the impression that any one career path is overly rosy. Every single career path in wildlife biology is going to have its own problems and going to have its own hurdles and going to have its own frustrations. I don't want you to kind of escape this video with the impression that non-academic career paths are the only valid options, that non-academic career paths are the ones that uh, don't have uh, you know, frustrating aspects to them. Um, you know, every career path as a wildlife biologist is valid. Um, it's just that the, the nature of academia is such that um, I personally couldn't rest easy in my work uh, if I knew that I wasn't doing everything I could uh, to help conserve cat species. I, I just want to emphasize that not everybody is going to be working with species that are uh, of such conservation concern. And some of that kind of more pure uh, research-oriented uh, focus may in fact be quite helpful, right? So it's just yeah, a lot of it will depend on the species. It will de depend on what your personal goals are as a wildlife biologist. And um, I don't want to dissuade you from an academic career path necessarily. It's just uh, my own kind of personal um, feelings towards the trajectory that I want my life to take and why academia just didn't really suit that trajectory in the same way that some of these alternative options have. So if you're wanting to be a wildlife biologist and you're wanting to engage in academia, absolutely go for it if it's something you want to do. I just want to emphasize that there are other options uh, out there and there are people like myself where the academic path just doesn't click in the way that some other uh, options do. Okay, and I think uh, with that, that'll be the end of this video. Hope you uh, appreciated the bit of a tour outside and some of the information you got there. Again, I just really want to emphasize that uh, there are all sorts of trajectories you can take as a wildlife biologist. And I hope that this video doesn't discourage you from wanting to become a wildlife biologist. And, you know, I hope that whatever uh, you know, variety of biologist you come, whatever part of the career path you take, uh, I hope that it's uh, you know unbelievably fulfilling for you because it it really is like I kind of emphasized in a previous video one of the most unique, remarkable, just amazing career paths out there. And um, whatever you choose to do, I hope you uh, find it to your liking, and I hope you're able to do work that uh, you feel is uh, fulfilling for yourself. And I think that's really the uh, important thing here. It's just an amazing field. Um, so with that said, I think that's going to be the end of the video here. If you haven't subscribed, uh, please do so. I would uh, love your company. I post all sorts of uh, wildlife related, outdoors related videos and uh, periodically uh, videos, you know, more oriented towards wildlife biologists in particular and uh, would love your company. And uh, until next time, as the catchphrase goes, wander in wonder. Enjoy yourselves.